is a fashion designer that needs no introduction. Just think bright red dreadlocks and leopard print frocks. Yes, Marianne Fassler is the topic of our next discussion and this time Mercedes-Benz has got her back. Joining our panel, we have Victor Rachale, acting MD for African Fashion International, Tsonwa Bile Damase, executive president of SAFTA, and South African designer Abigail Betts. But first, let's take a look at what Marianne had to say. Arriving at designer Marianne Fossler's studio, it is impossible not to notice her signature leopard spots adorning a multicolored vehicle. One may think of the leopard frocked car as a form of dowry, consummating the recent partnership between the brand and Sandown Motors. Both parties agree it's a match made in branding heaven. The partnership was conceived in such a way that they could associate themselves with a, a brand that, that was clearly going to give them value and was clearly going to attract enough attention for them to find it worthwhile. And also I have got a personal relationship with the brand, I mean with, with Sandown Motor Holdings um, over a very long period of time so that it was almost a given that they would do this. Sadie's Benz is continuously evolving in new products, new ways of doing things. We are uh, proud to be associated with Marianne Faisler and the fashion show. I think fashion and, 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 and Mercedes Benz and Sandown Motors are, are a marriage. It seems their compatibility lies in a common appreciation for creative evolution, whilst not compromising on that which makes their brands distinct. As a seasoned designer in the cutthroat world of fashion, Marianne's decision reflects that she has a keen eye for prints as well as for business. I wouldn't still be surviving in business if I didn't actually make money out of this business. You know, this is not a patronage or something that somebody pays you in order to do this massive installation. But I did realise that if I were to do this properly, I was going to have to work ten times harder and that I was going to need a lot of resources and that's why I then got myself a sponsor so that we could do it properly but I certainly intend turning this collection into a commercial collection. This is my summer collection. With a similar practical vision, it seems Sandown Motors fully intends to give Marianne's collection the sort of mileage she's aiming for. Okay, as a sponsor, we, we sponsor all the vehicles uh, for the event. Uh, for Marianne, we also uh, will do the transport for our customers to the event and from the event. We also sponsor two vehicles that's been branded specifically for this event and then uh, uh, further on we will continue our relationship by hosting uh, a couple of fashion events at some of our bigger dealerships. Africa remains my source of inspiration and I do reflect the my space where I am, you know, and I I believe that that is what makes me unique and what makes me perhaps even almost in a way a sort of international brand so that I don't necessarily have stores all over the world but people look to my brand as being something which is different to anyone else. And of course, like most of the nation, both Leopard Frock and Sandown Motors have embraced the World Cup season as an auspicious time to come together. South Africa, this fabulous World Cup, those wonderful stadia. And so I couldn't do a mediocre show, I need to do the best. And I'm patriotic and wildly African, so I did my best. With the Soccer World Cup being inside Africa at the moment, uh, it's the biggest sporting event in the world, this being one of the biggest fashion events in the world. Uh, taking our sand on motor customers there, this is just a win-win for both parties. So, Sonia Bile, we've seen more and more businesses collaborating with fashion. We've just seen Mercedes-Benz, Audi is known for that, um, Anglo Gold even, with the jewellery. So, what do you think is in it for the designer? Well, one would say, actually, at the moment, it is good to launch a, it is, we can you call it a launching pad mm -hmm. for the designers out there in the marketplace, because which is something that is good for a designer to be known. But it's another thing, if ever, then they are not injecting capital mm -hmm. as in terms of what you will be producing. Why not? That's why I'm saying that it is another thing, because mm -hmm. in the sense that you, 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 you know that they always, um, institutions and uh, companies, they always use fashion as an event or as a sense of, you know, 
not as a business, you know, just only to create their halabaloo, their wow effect out there. But uh, we always say that fashion is business. It creates job. It creates opportunities for the same people that actually, if you look at it now, <coughs> um, clothing has been hit hard than any other sector in, in this economy at this recession. point in time, in yeah. the recession. So therefore, I, we're always appealing that let us don't use designers for glamour and cleats. Use it and make it a point that the designer at the end of the day must become sustainable to create more job. If then, at the end of the day, Marianne Fasler is going to be in a position of having more employees into her business and make it a point that there are job opportunities that have been created, we clap hands behind her and said, voila, that's the good thing. Because many a times, like I say, it's not happening. Yeah. You'll find well, that it's, do yeah. it's done at the end Abigail, event. it seems like you um, nodding your head. So <laughs> tell us about your experience I, with corporate investment yeah, in this I sector. agree with everything that he says, but you know, it's um, a partnership. It's like any partnership. It's like a marriage. You have to click. And it's not, uh, with these big corporate companies, it's always about the bottom line. And that's why a lot of designers only last, or small companies only last for a year. Because at the end of that year, the big guys want to see, okay, what is the bottom line? It's not, you're not making the bottom line, it's close you down. And that's what happens. So I think that these big corporate companies need to be actually more educated. They, de they need to know what is fashion really about. They need to know how long mm. it takes. It's about building a name, it's about building a brand. It's about, it takes years and years and years and years. They've got to be in it for the long haul. They yeah. can't just be in it for the bottom line after one year. But and Victor, at the end yeah. of the day, any company is in it for the money and the bottom line. So what is Africa Fashion International when they decide on who sponsors them, who they collaborate with? What exactly are you looking for? I think we're we looking, and this is to reiterate Abigail's uh, point, we're looking for like-minded partners, like-minded brands. Um, as an example, with our recent Africa Fashion Week, uh, our biggest sponsor uh, was the Gauteng Economic Development Agency. Now one would, uh, would, would, would wonder why would a, a government agency want to be partners with uh, you know, something like Africa Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. But the opportunity for them there was really to kind of use AFI as a platform to develop um, designers, uh, specifically designers from Gauteng. So in, in conjunction with uh, JEDA, we also set up as AFI a store we, which has been uh, uh, running at the SCC during the month of, of the World Cup. So, so their, their main sort of uh, purpose for joining hands with us was they saw this opportunity for us to develop yeah. uh, um, and create a business platform for yeah. hunting based designers. But would you agree with what Abigail says in the sense that sponsors eventually lose patience when they can't see the bottom line? No yeah, even business. though they're like-minded. Yeah, absolutely, uh, which is why it, it, it has to start first and foremost with like-minded. Yeah. The, the purpose has to be the same um, because at the end of the day, it's not about putting money for the sake of putting money. I mean, the objectives of companies that sponsor differ. Some may be about uh, extending their brand mm -hmm. uh, and, and growing their brand, and some may have a, a, a sales target as, as an example. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so, so depending on what the objectives mm. of the mm. sponsoring brand is, mm. uh, you, you may end up in a, that first absolutely, and foremost, yeah. Before you, you know, before you, you sign on the dotted line as, yeah. as an event so owner like the AFI, key, the key is to really understand why am I talk, Why are they mm. talking to to me as an AFI? What are the objectives? Yeah. Because the success of whether they there with you the long term. Uh, is, is, is going to be gauged mm. on whether or not you you you're ticking the right boxes yeah. in terms of objectives. But then, Sandra Billy, are we getting our objectives wrong then? Do we understand what like-mindedness is? Are we getting it all wrong? I, I should think so to a particular degree. We are, it's, it's a chicken and egg, which one comes first? Mm -hmm. One actually needs to make it a point that I'm, I'll get my name out there in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And even if ever then, one will call it, I prosecute my brand out there in the marketplace. But if ever then I need an assistant, mm -hmm. you know, you must understand that clothing, is a cutthroat business, you know. It's not an easy, especially in our country, um, whereby we have got labor intensive, and also you've got labor bureaus that uh, your COSATU and so forth and SACTU 
that so people it keep on coming. Isn't good to get the financial in. investment though? So it's a double-edged sword. Isn't that what you're that, saying? That's what I'm saying, exactly. Mm. Because at the end of the day, one moment, for example, in a situation like that one of Marin Faso, mm. you get an opportunity. Mm. Then the to next, grow to be grow, better. to be yeah. become better, you get um, unions mm. coming in as well to cut you yeah. halfway mm. to find out how much you are paying for your own employees. So too many players within too the industry. Too many players okay. within the same Thanks. industry. As much as what one will say, you know, AFI, they're doing as in terms of creating that platform for the designers as in terms of those that are already can be in a position of producing. Yeah, okay? But now you have got another one which is called the developmental angle, which is then that is where people like ourselves, where we work with the designers that leave the institutions of learning, that do not know what to expect in the mainstream of the economy, what we expect out there. Then you get like-minded as well, companies that you would like to earmark yourself with. Mm -hmm. But you find that somewhere along the line, like everybody's saying, they're looking for what they call bottom line, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And that's where I think designers also need to be better educated, because they get themselves into a fix. Yeah. And um, contracts, contracts are the most yeah. important thing. Uh, designers because need help help with contracts. Designers you know? are not normally no. or usually business savvy. No. You are they're, they're creative. We're creative, and and that's why you think, or well, a lot of people have the misconception when we're partnering with this corporate business, they're going to take care of that. But a lot of people get screwed over. These you know? loopholes. These there's, things. There's you're not aware loopholes, of. and I mean, okay. I think we need to know. I mean, if I could have put a clause in my contract that said my corporate investor can start looking at the bottom line after five years. I think that's in a reasonable amount of time mm. to have grown the brand and to have yeah. done something with the brand and have made some kind of turnover. Yeah. You know, so I think um, designers need to look very carefully at their contracts. They need help with that. Actually, Is this where yeah. you come in, Sam? That's right, yes. This is one of the things that needed to be understood out there because a man on the street does not understand fashion is about glamour and glitz. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's about seeing the garments on the ra on, on the ramp yeah. and the catwalk and that's a, but fashion only 10% of fashion that actually takes the rest 90% about business of fashion yeah. Yeah. if you do not understand how to service your client yeah. if you do not understand how to add the contract, yeah. understanding about this contract, running to a business, uh, running of the business the from A up to Z. Thank you so much, Billy. We need to take a break.